Today's moderator is Brent Perzenka. Brent has worked at the Council for 13 years as a store manager of the Sharper Vision Store. So he knows lots about our products and what's available. And so I'll go ahead and turn it over to Brent to say a few words. Good morning, everyone. Um, thanks for joining us this morning. Um, a little background on, on myself. I grew up in a household with two um, legally blind parents, um, which is how I, I got into this field. Um, I'm also currently um, working on a master's degree in vision rehabilitation, um, teaching um, through Western Michigan and their Iron Lawn program right now. Um, but I've been here, as Gene said, with the, with the Wisconsin Council for 13 years working in our store. Um, but they, they keep coming out with new products all the time, so I always encourage any of our uh, customers or, or people to um, suggest to us different products maybe we don't have or new things on the market that you find out because we're always looking for adaptive aids that can help those with visual impairments. Um, for, for ordering any of our products, we have catalogs available for people um, that can um, call and place an order. Um, we have customer representatives here that can help if you have questions on any of the products and how they work um, or if there's certain products you're looking for that you don't see in our catalog, we can hopefully help you find those. Um, we also have a website um, that you can order products off of as well. Um, we also are going to be offering a 10% um, coupon at the end of the webinar for those of you that stay. So um, please hold on till the end and we'll tell you how to get that coupon when the webinar is finished. So now we'll move on to the videos um, that we have to, to show for you today. Today we're going to be doing videos um, from uh, different uh, co-workers here at the council that are visually impaired. Um, most of them are visually impaired, I should say, that um, use a lot of our products in their personal life. So they're going to share their personal testimonies on these products and how they've worked um, in their life. Um, so our first slide is going to be by our new executive director, um, Denise Jess. And she'll talk about um, some different magnification products she uses and along with her um, computer software. Hi, I'm Denise Jess. I'm the CEO, Executive Director for the Wisconsin Council of the Blind and Visually Impaired. And here at the Council, our mission is to promote the dignity, empowerment, and independence of people in the state who are blind and visually impaired. And we do that in three primary ways. The first is that we offer direct service through low vision exams, rehabilitation, and our Sharper Vision Store, and you're going to learn a lot about that today. Uh, we also pr uh, promote legislation, and we provide education to the general public about blindness and visual impairment. I am very privileged to work um, in a place that helps me with some of the adaptive equipment that makes my job easier and I'm so excited to share a few of the great um, tools with you this morning and a little bit about how they work. So um, one of my most simple and favorite ones is my handheld magnifier and this tool goes with me everywhere. It lives in my pocket so it is with me from the time I get up in the morning until I go to bed at night. It goes to the grocery store with me to read labels. It helps me read by mail as it comes in both at home and here at the council. Helps me with pill bottles, uh, helps me with recipes. It's particularly good for short term reading. I don't find it to be really useful when I've got a lot of reading to do, but in those instances when somebody hands me their business card or I'm looking at my phone, I can simply hold the magnifier up close to my eye and hold the reading material a slight distance away, just find the right place where it comes into focus and it magnifies, this one magnifies it seven times the regular size and I find it really helpful with my phone as well. So while there's some great magnification um, opportunities with the iPhone, not everything is magnifiable. So I can again hold it close to my eye, 
kind of resting on the top of my cheek and be able to look at incoming um, emails, Facebook posts, um, things that aren't pinchable to make them larger. So that toy goes with me everywhere. I can tell you it is sturdy as all get out. It has hit the pavement many times and has, other than just a few scratches and dents, it has um, held up beautifully. And why don't you use uh, one with a light? Um, typically, I don't need the light for short-term things. Um, and sometimes because of the, how I hold it, the, when I would try lighted ones in the past, the light would get in my eyes. So for the short-term use, the non-lighted one uh, works great. Plus, it's got enough of the high-powered magnification. And I know sometimes folks say that they wish they were these were bigger, but when you get close to it, you can see it is incredibly thick. It's probably, I don't know, what do you think, a half an inch thick or a quarter of an inch thick, so they can't really be constructed bigger. So it's um, really useful for looking at small bits of text at the same time. One of the tools that um, I really appreciate and one that I was able to start using uh, upon coming to the staff of the council is a video, a video magnifier. And this tool is phenomenal because I can look at much larger blocks of text, whether um, it's a newsletter or a document or a spreadsheet with a whole lot of numbers and magnify it to the size that is comfortable reading for me. So this particular model, the Da Vinci, has a whole lot of features, including a really accessible um, uh, controller, which I'll demonstrate in just a minute. But the piece of document, or the document you want to look at, goes right underneath this light and then is projected onto the screen, as is my hand. I often think that when I drop a stitch in my knitting, I'm gonna bring it in here to fix it because I can easily put it under here and see the drop stitch. So this is one of our newsletters here at the council, and I can slide this under, and I can make it the size that is most easily readable for me. So the headline's no problem, but as I get into the text, this is too little. So on my controller, I just need to use the dial knob and turn it up. And there's even an audio that tells me how large have I gotten it. So Zoom 5 is pretty good. Zoom 6. Zoom 7. Zoom 7 for me is fantastic. And that's almost equivalent to the size that I would get with my little magnifier here. But now I can do much bigger blocks of text. So, and then as I'm moving along, I can just slide my document to be able to um, read the sentence at the speed that I'm able to track it. The other thing that I love about this is that I can change the display. So you notice that this is a little bit of a shiny paper. So I'm getting a little bit of a glare, which I can reduce by how I hold the paper but I also can change the display enhance positive. to this one is enhanced positive. So it takes the color away and really makes it more like a black and white and um, allows me to see it much more brightly and cleanly and crisply. And for certain kinds of paper, certain kind of documents, this is really helpful. You can also do the in the negative, the black background with the white. For me personally, this isn't a preference, but I know for some people this is incredibly helpful to have the, um, the negative imagery uh, instead. And it's last option. Yellow. Looks like the Swedish flag, but um, you know, uh, not preferable to me, but again for other folks that could be quite preferable and then back to the normal. normal. So one of the things I want to demonstrate is the controller, and uh, um, there's more bells and whistles on this that I've learned to use yet, but there's some just really simple ways to use the controller. So um, the on and off button is here on the actual device, but once you're on the controller, here's that button that I used earlier for changing the display. That's positive. Up in the upper left-hand corner. And then here is that the dial um, switches the um, size. So there's that dial. 
And then there's a volume control too, so that I can adjust this. Volume three. Volume four. And those buttons are right below the dial as as volume five. The button in the upper right hand corner will draw some lines on the text that I can use for helping me to uh, block a piece of text. So if the page is visually overwhelming and I need to just focus on a portion of it, this button um, allows me to do that and now I can go back to the standard um, text. I know that the DaVinci can read to me. I haven't used that feature yet. The other feature that's um, on here, which I have not used yet, is one that allows me to take a picture of something and store it. And I'm just about ready to leave for a conference and I know I'll get a lot of business cards. And so one of the things I wanna do. Enhanced negative. Normal. upon my return is take pictures of all these business cards because I struggle to read them so much and then I can store them um, on the DaVinci itself and then when I want to reference back to the business cards I can pull up that file and look at them. First of all I have a very large monitor and it makes my life significantly easier to have a monitor and have it placed close enough to me that I can see without having to pull my body forward. I have a lot of chronic neck and um, shoulder pain from years of hunching over a monitor that was too small, um, trying to be able to see what I was looking at. What I brought up here is the council webpage and I kind of have it in a standard um, size that it might look when you first pull up a web page and this is clearly even with my large monitor way too small for me to see so there's just a super easy keyboard shortcut that I want to show you first that um, I uh, learned a long time ago to hit the control button and then the plus sign and you can start to see that each time I do that the magnification increases still too little for me to see so I can just keep right on a going. I haven't hit it yet but we will pretty soon. And we are looking pretty good on this white cane safety day article. I probably would go up one more time to really be able to read it. So um, and then when you want to uh, you know, it does require kind of scrolling around on the board a little bit. You, you can't see the whole thing at once, but you know, you can mouse around and be able to see um, the entire article. And when I want it to be little again, or I need to see the full page, I just do the control button and um, I do the control button and I go back to um, a, a smaller size. Another great shortcut or um, adaptation that Microsoft has done is they've built in um, on the accessibility features of uh, magnifier and so I have loaded it onto my tool tray down here and I just need to double click it to activate it and where did you go there it is and it's at the top of my screen click that and then I can hit the plus sign and then you can see that it just brought the screen up even further um, and then I can scroll uh, use my mouse to move around the page to where I need to go this magnifier is particularly useful on pages that don't respond to the control plus so often when I'm in email um, Outlook doesn't respond to control plus so I can easily then just use this uh, digital magnifier that's built right into my computer to uh, to make things bigger and I can adjust the size of that as well so and then when I'm ready to be done using it I just hit the um, minus sign and it goes back to the regular size so one of the features from Word that, um, and it's also true in Excel that uh, I find really useful is that I can increase the page size. So I'm just going to start typing um, some text. 
and right now that's fairly easy for me to see because I've got my font set at 14 point and it's um, Verdana which is an easy clear font but if that was difficult for me to see I could do a couple different things down in the bottom left right hand corner of my screen is a little slider and I can put my cursor on that and slide the page so that the font size increases and I can go as high or as low as I need to do with the little slider. I can also go into, at the top of my page, I can go into view and go to zoom and I can put in the percentage that I can either choose from the defaults or I can put in the percentage that's most helpful to me and personally 150% is usually what does it. Um, so that way I can make my documents very accessible and again I can sit back, have proper po posture in my chair and be able to maintain good ergonomics with my hands and shoulders and, and neck. We also carry um, different types of video magnifiers other than the one that um, Denise showed you which was the DaVinci. Um, on display here at the council we have uh, about 10 different types of, of um, magnification video magnifiers on display that you can sit down and try out to find uh, one that's going to suit your needs. Um, we also have a few different OCR units for those um, with no vision um, that can read the text to you. Um, you could get the OCR units both with video or just a standalone type of unit uh, to read you the text. Uh, we also have different portable video magnifying units. Um, I want to say we have about 10 different um, types of vid portable video magnifiers as well um, that you can sit down and try out to find the one that's going to suit your needs. Um, and then also for, for screen readers on your computer, um, Denise was using the video magnification um, that, that was with her her PC, but you can also get software um, for your computer, um, either um, software that will enlarge the, the text on your screen or software um, that will read the text to you on your screen. And there's some different um, different ones out there, and again, uh, we'll, we'd have to, to find out what would suit your needs, so um, either you can call us and talk to us about those, or, or we can um, sit down with you um, to find the right one for, for you. Um, next we're going to be showing you a video um, by Tim Davis um, who uh, many of you may have talked to on the telephone. Um, uh, Tim's the friendly guy answering our phones here most days um, so he's going to talk about a few products that he uses in his daily life um, to make life easier. Um, here's Tim. Hi, my name is Tim Davis and I am the Assistant Store Manager here at the Wisconsin Council of Blind and Visually Impaired. Uh, you may hear me every now and then because I do a lot of uh, answering at the front desk to take orders and answer your questions. Uh, I'm going to discuss uh, right now the ID Mate in which uh, we can special order for you at our store if you would like to purchase one. What this is, is this is a barcode reader, is this main function uh, which I use at home and then for some other opportunities that, are, that I do in the off time. And this is what it is, it's very portable. And as you can see, it has a few buttons um, as far as like a mode button, a reverse button, forward button, which I'll demonstrate. And what's really neat about this is it has a leather lanyard that I put over my neck so that way I have both hands free to pick up products at home if I need to find a can of soup or a boxed um, cereal or whatever it may be. A couple of my examples that I'll be using today is one is my favorite beverage which is Mountain Dew. And in case I'm at home and my children or someone mixes up the beverages that we do have, I can use this barcode reader in which I'll find a label and it'll tell me what it is. And we'll give it a try. It has a volume switch on the top, a dial, which I'll turn up here for you. Browsing memo, MP3 system, help. 
there are various options I'll talk about in a moment. As you heard, there was a beep. I have to give it about five seconds to clear, and you may be able to tell, I'm not sure. You'll see a red laser that comes through the bottom of this. And I put this on the label, and I turn it until it finds it. Product MTN Dew. It said Product MTN Dew, which is Mountain Dew, and I can push these two arrows, and it'll give me more information when it says continue. Product MTN Dew. And this is some of the options. Manufacturer's phone. Address. As you can see, we'll four, give an address, four, a phone four, number, seven, seven, inventory. things like that. And the neat part also is that it will give calories, which I'm not going to disclose because it's way too many calories for this item, but it has a lot of neat information on that. And I'll show a couple other um, options here for you. We'll go back to the ID mode section. And I love music, so I do a lot on my iDevice, but I still like the traditional CDs, so I can look for the label again. Artist Rick Nelson, title late 1983 to 1985. As you see, I said Ricky Nelson. And what's neat with this CD is it'll tell me the track, so if I use the up and down arrows. Track one, stood up waiting in school. There's track one. Two, I got a feeling. Three, traveling man. There's an example, there's three of the tracks, and there's 18 on this. And then some CDs, it does not show the tracks, but it tells you the album, and I'll give an example of that. Product, Ron Stewart, Stardust, The Great American Songbook, Volume YYI. So I just told me it was Rod Stewart in his storybook uh, collection, so that I know which CD that is also. Now, if I'm in my pantry and I'm trying to find certain products to eat for dinner and I want to make sure I have the right item, I brought a couple different ones and by chance they're almost identical, but I can do the same thing. And most of the barcodes of boxes are usually on the bottom, so sometimes you may have to look at each side. It may take a few minutes to find it. Um, before we did the taping, I found the bottom to expedite and we'll show you how that works. Product is that rate, New Orleans style original jambalaya mix. Yes, it is jambalaya mix. And then the last one, which is a larger box, we'll try this also. Product is that rate, New Orleans style dirty rice mix original. So this is the same brand, but this is my dirty rice mix. Well, and here's the ounce. example. Package size 12 dot zero ounce. 12 ounce package. Instructions. Microwave directions. One, mix three three fourths cups hot water, rice, mix one one half LBS ground beef, coat and drain, and two tablespoon vegetable or olive oil. Optional. It tells the ingredients for you. Oil drop. Serving size 38.0. Servings per container. Calories per serving 130. So it gives you wonderful information. This also does other which I won't demonstrate all of them, but you have other options that you can do with this. The main purpose is the barcode reader. But if I push the, the large select button, which is this rectangular one right here, it'll... Inventory. I can inventory items, which I rarely use. Memo, I can use this as a recorder no, no, if I like, memory. in which I can take notes if you do not have a personal recorder or use an iDevice. MP3 player. MP3 player, you can download music. Press assistant. Now the system is wonderful. Six percent current date and time. Friday, October twenty-eighth, two thousand sixteen, eleven thirty-eight a.m. As you can see, I can do additional information, but it tells me the date, time, and battery life, which is very important. This usually can be used for approximately three hours at a time, and then it takes a couple hours to recharge in the wall. It will tell all the instruction on how to use all these menus, how to set the calendar, how does the ID mate, and all, all the different ones. So it is a wonderful unit. We are now doing a back behind the scenes of the store, in which this is our storeroom. And we'll show a couple of different items in a little bit. But the first item that we have is the pen friend, which I use daily here in the store and the storeroom, which I'll show in a moment. But the neat functions of this is, as you can see, it's shaped like a pen. Uh, you can record a number of labels. It has a volume control. 
and in the box comes about 120 labels of various sizes that you can put on items and the first thing I'll show is the box that it comes in you want to keep the box and I'll show you why in a moment here is the box that you can place the pen friend in I advise that you always keep it for the following reasons one is there are raised buttons that I'm showing you and they are pre-recorded so it describes each function of the pen friend in case you need a reminder and here's a couple of and here's a couple of examples. So for example, is speaking where the power button is, how it works, and the volume. And if you want to learn a button below. This explains how to record items. So, for example, it also has how the mode button works and another miscellaneous button that you can use. And it just demonstrated the different things that you can do when recording. What's neat underneath is that it has a pre-molded place to put your pen friend, so that way it's protected if you're not using it. And underneath it has a storage area where you can keep all of the labels, which I mentioned earlier, of the various sizes that you can use. And also it has a, a lanyard that can also be attached to put around your neck if you need your hands free to do that. Each year we have our annual calendars come out and we have three different types again this year in which the way I find them in the store is we've pre-labeled all the shelving so I feel here I find a dot and when I put the pen friend on it. So what that tells me is our product number and the description so when you need to purchase the item or any other customer then I know where to find it and bring it out for you. And this is our WCBVI large print calendar which is one of the most popular ones. It is reasonably priced and it has large squares in which you can read the numbers for you know what day of the week it is and to put any notes in. Our next calendar is our desk calendar slash notebook calendar and what people like about this is the spiral bound as you can see it goes on both pages as far as showing the calendar so it's easy to read and make potential notes and what one of the major benefits is of the desk calendar is it has a front and back pocket in which you can you know play sticky notes read not reminder notes that way you can find them when you have an appointment with the calendar and these are the 2017 version they are available at this time uh, the previous one I mentioned are on order and will be in shortly and our third calendar is our large wall calendar right as you can see the benefit of this is that it's very large and it has places where you can easily write in notes and you can also read the numbers and the months pretty easily a lot of people like this just because of that reason and it can also put it on a wall uh, the previous one is more for a refrigerator and then the other as I mentioned is more of a desk calendar so these are the three calendars that we are offering this year and this one is also available at this time okay. another use for the pen friend is of course is it using at home that's why you would like to have one here is an example of one of the small dots that you will receive with your pen friend there are also ones that are a size of approximately a silver dollar for larger areas I use mine at home for the following functions is I always um, put them on my manila folders in which I keep all my record keeping for example taxes my bills and any other paperwork that I need so that way I can find it without asking family members to do that for example 
what I did with this, which I know is Ricky Nelson, but I had a sighted person assist me, and then I recorded it as so. Ricky Nelson, greatest hit CD. So then I can find it that way also. And the other option is we can reuse these dots to record other things. For example, if I push the record button, which is the bottom button where my thumb is, I will record another message that I can put on this dot. Now that I heard the beep, I know it's recording, so everything I'm saying is now replacing the Ricky Nelson message. And now we will push the play button, and the way that this plays, which I did not mention earlier, is that all you need to do is place it on a dot and it starts playing for you. You do not have to touch any type of button. So let's give it a try. Now that I heard the beep, I know it's recording, so everything I'm saying is now replacing the Ricky Nelson. So as you can see, that's the way that I did it. And as long as you hold down the record button, it'll keep recording. If you take your thumb off the record button, then it will stop. We are now in our kitchen area in which we're going to show one of the simple strategies and reasonably cost using identification dots. There are several types of dots that you can choose from and the first one I will talk about is the dimple dot which can go on a keyboard. I use them at home and on my laptop so you can identify you know number pad like the number five or your F and J in case they are wearing off on your keyboard and a lot of people use them for that reason and they're very easy to apply and remove as needed. The second that I will mention is one of our most popular items. It is the orange slash reddish um, identification dot in which it has a wonderful you know, bright color for a low vision person to use plus it has a um, a very good adhesive and a rubber backing, so that way it's easy to touch also. Three of the others is we have black, white, and clear. And if you have white appliances at home, for amazing contrast, they use the black so that way you can tell on your appliance where the dot is and how to find it easily. And vice versa on the white, if you have a black appliance, the white will work fine. The last is the clear in which if someone has no vision and they do not need the color contrast, they can use the clear identification dots on their various appliances. An example is here on our stove on the far left on our burner dial. For the people that are visually impaired here is we have a dot that represents where the off is also where the medium low temperature is and the medium high so that you can cook soup or any warm or reheat anything they may need. At my home, uh, what I do with my stove is that I put it on the medium and medium high also but only on one of the dials because all the rest would be the same. The next feature that we mark on the stove is the timer and the clock. If you are baking at home, of course you want to have the timer on so your uh, baking items do not burn. And depending on your stove, you can have it on timer or the up and down arrows in order to set the timer. The next dial is the oven dial. And the way we have this identified is we have a dot on the dial itself because it's a circular dial with a line so if you're visually impaired you cannot make that out and then we have one on the backing at 350 degrees so we turn the dial and the two dots coincide then the person knows that they have it at 350 to bake the item they need at my home the dial varies a little bit because it has a pointer on it so i don't need to have an identification dot on the dial but I do have it at 350 and 425 for you know baking the meats and bakery goods and pizzas so that way 
uh, we can identify that if we can uh, see the numbers ourselves. The next appliance we will speak about, which almost every household has, is the dishwasher. And as here and at my home, we pretty much had the same things identified. Is one dot is for your cycle, so you know if you're doing a full cycle or half cycle of when you're cleaning your dishes. And the other is the start slash power button. Some of the other appliances that I use my identification dots at home for is the microwave in which I put it on the popcorn setting, usually the start button, the clear button, and the number five button. And the reason I do the number five is because it's just like a calculator in which I know the one, two, and three are above, and then the four and six are on each side, and the seven, eight, and nine are below. So it gives me a common point to punch in numbers for how long I need to reheat something. The other appliance is the washer and dryer in which on my washer a dot to where the hot cycle is where I can do my whites and then also one on the cold setting for all my other laundry items. And it may vary depending on your washer or dryer if you need to put them on you know, on the dial or on the facing itself, but it's a wonderful, reasonable tool to use. Um, so those of you um, with some vision, there's a Tim's friendly face to go with his friendly voice if you've spoken to him on the phone. Um, and I should mention at the end of the webinar here, we'll, we'll stick around for as many questions as you have. So um, on any of these products, prices, anything like that, we can answer at the end of the webinar here. Next, we're going to talk uh, about um, an iBill um, currency reader, um, along with uh, an app for money reading, um, some measuring spoons, and a double spatula for the kitchen um, area. And um, talking to you will be um, a former colleague, Virginia DeBlay. Um, many of you know she's um, served on the board here at the council for years and has been one of our vision rehab um, therapist that just retired here about a month or two ago, but she's still volunteering her time to help us out. Um, so this next uh, video will be Virginia. I'm Virginia Dublay, a rehab teacher with the Council of the Blind, mm -hmm. and I just recently retired, but it's only been a couple weeks, so I still remember how to do stuff. And mm -hmm. that's what I'm here to demonstrate today for you. The first item we're going to talk about is the iBill Reader. It is a little um, device with a slot in the top, um, in the front, and the bill goes into the slot and you just push the little button. There's one on each end so you can push with either hand and it will tell you what your bill is. You can set it to vibrate only. You can set it for tones instead of speech. And you can control the volume. And that's all that it does, and it's free from the Department of the Treasury. And um, so for anybody who needs easy access to identifying money, it's a good deal. This is a demonstration of a money reader app for your smartphone. Um, it will identify your bill when you hold it so that the camera can take a picture. So I'm going to talk to Siri and say, hey Siri, open money reader. Money reader is now running and I'm going to, and it said one dollar when, when I held it, um, in, and you don't have to hold it that close to the camera, um, you can hold it further away, but it, but it really works well. These are measuring spoons with braille markings on them, and although you can't see the braille, where my finger is, is where the braille is. So the top spoon in my hand is the one-fourth um, teaspoon. And then the one half teaspoon, 
um, the one teaspoon, the one tablespoon, and a two tablespoon. And there are several other um, spoons that come in this set, so you can use anything between two tablespoons and what's the smallest one? One one thirty second. One thirty second of a which is not even a pinch, I don't think. But anyway, they are available and they do work. You can use them. And they have raised numbers as well. This is a double spatula. It's really good for anybody that has any vision problems or if you if you can see really well but you tend to flip things and not put them back in the same place. Um, it's one of the things that I use all the time is a double spatula. You can you can use it and then just flip it over and put the item back in the pan and um, we'll do it with a chicken breast that we have in the pan here and now I'm kind of doing this from the side so but as you can see I did not flip it out of the pan or anything and it's flipped over there. so for those of you that are interested in getting um, the iBill reader um, you can um, go through the talking book library um, to get that um, or we have put up on the screen here um, a website link that you can go to uh, to get the to fill out an application um, for the iBill reader um, through the Bureau of Engraving and Printing um, or if you have any other questions or you need our assistance in, in helping you get the iBill reader just give us a call um, and we can give you further instruction on that um, next up um, for our presenters is going to be um, Judith Rasmussen here with the council. Many of you may know Judith or also have talked to Judith on the phone. She also um, does uh, customer service on the telephone for us taking orders um, and that sort of thing. So she's also going to talk about a few of the products that we carry here in the store that she uses um, in her daily life and how they've helped her. So here's Judith. Hi, my name is Judith Rasmussen. I'm a program assistant here at the Wisconsin Council of the Blind and Visually Impaired. I answer the phone and take store orders, and I also produce the braille materials we need either in-house for staff members and our board or uh, for sending out our quarterly newsletter, the Council Courier. Today I'm going to show you a, a talking calculator and I use one of these all the time at work when I'm taking store orders. So I'm going to turn it on. One, two, equals one, two, one, two, plus one, five, minus five, equals two, two. You can also turn the sound off on this and just read the uh, visual display. And now I'm going to turn it, I'm going to clear it first. All clear and turn it off. And now I'm going to show you a talking clock. I really like this because I can put it around my neck and I always have it with me. In my kitchen, I put it in a little snack bag so I don't get it messy, but then I can check the time when I'm timing something I'm making. It has a little bar sort of uh, button here which tells the time. And on the back are three buttons. The first one allows you to change the time. I'm going to press it once. Time set. And that's telling me the time is set. If I press it another time, alarm set. Alarm set. And then it's back to uh, just being uh, not changing any time. The middle button alarm is the alarm. And it just said alarm on 5 o'clock AM. Snooze on, 5 o'clock a.m. Alarm off. And alarm off. The third button, the one on the very right, uh, allows you to set it so that it will chime on the hour, every hour. 
and I'm going to turn that off. And I'm going to uh, turn it back over to the front side where I can tell what time it is. And that's the keychain talking clock. Now I'm going to show you a talking kitchen scale and I use one of these at home for uh, measuring ingredients I'm going to put in recipes. Um, and I'm going to turn it on. You'll hear it say hello and then in a couple seconds it will say I'm ready and I'll place my bag of dark, dark chocolate chips on its little platform. Hello. It's ready. As you'll notice, it said one pound, four point something ounces. I can change this to grams if I'd like one to. One pound, four point zero ounces. So let's do that. Five hundred and sixty-eight grams. And now it said five hundred and sixty-eight grams. I can also have this scale talk to me in Spanish, German, French, and of course English. So we're going to try and change the language. German. French. Hola. Spanish. Hello. Back to English. And then I can turn her off and you'll notice she'll say goodbye. Goodbye. Um, in addition to some of the products that you were showed there, we have lots of different um, talking um, timepieces, both clock or watches. Um, we also have braille watches um, and low vision um, watches and clocks um, here in stock. Um, next we're going to hear um, from Amy Wirf, um, who is our low vision specialist here at the council. Um, and she's going to display one of our portable video magnifiers called the Ruby, um, which again, like I had mentioned earlier, is one of many that we carry here. Um, each, each one kind of serves a, a different purpose maybe in, in for each individual what uh, you know what size portable video magnifier you may want um, button accessibility on on, on the devices and, and different things like that um, so it's one of those things it's probably best to, to, to try out um, if you're able to so here's Amy Hi, I'm Amy Worf, and I'm the Low Vision Therapist with the Council. And today I want to show you um, some of the features with the Ruby 7 Portable Magnifier. It's already turned on. I'll show you quickly if we just push it down. It turns itself off. And it's very easy to lift off of its legs, and it tips up at an angle to turn on. It has a nice angle for viewing. The buttons on the right hand side, there's a black plus on yellow and a black minus. The plus, of course, takes the print up bigger. And it's a smooth range of magnification up and down. And the minus is taking it down. On the left hand side, we have an up arrow and a down arrow, white on blue. That's to change color. So right now we're in white on black on white. This is natural color. So if I have a photo, in the newspaper, I can see that photo. We have yellow and black, blue and yellow, white on black, and then back to black on white. So you have a lot of good choices for colors. One of the nice features of this Ruby is there is a distance camera. I'm going to take it into color. And if I turn that distance camera, I can see some things across the room. You can even turn the camera all the way around to do a self-portrait on the screen. And the other nice feature with this, I can turn that camera, put a piece of paper under here. Because I can angle that camera out, I can actually write my name or sign a check under this. And it's one of the few portables that's really very friendly for, for that purpose. One other feature on this device, I'm going to take it into a good high contrast mode. I can take a photo with the upper right hand button of that image 
And then I can take that print bigger, and in between the plus and the minus for size, there's a round dial with an indent in it. And if I push the right hand edge, it scrolls back and forth across that picture that was magnified. And then it will also go down. So it just does the point that you took a picture of. So it's always good to take a picture in the small size and then you can scroll in larger print and not have to move it. Otherwise, this device is very lightweight and it's easy. Take that print up a little bit. It's easy to read across a page of print. It doesn't, it's not so heavy that it tries to drag the paper as you're reading. It's a seven inch screen on the Ruby. It has an internal battery. So when you, you can charge it, it takes about three hours to fully charge. And on a full charge, if you're using it constantly, the battery will last two and a half to three hours. If you use it on and off throughout the course of days, you probably don't have to charge it very often. When it went turned off, the battery indicator came up. And when it first turns on, we have a battery indicator up at the upper right corner, full green is fully charged, then that goes away. There are other features in here. There's a line marker option, and there's some other features in the menu to change some of the color choices. But coming right out of the box, it's a very simple device to use, very lightweight, comes with a nice uh, little padded case that you can carry it around, and it's nice for moving around your home or if you go on vacation or to family's homes for the holidays, you'll have a portable reader with you. And that's the Ruby. What I'd like to show you now are a variety of the playing cards in large print that we have. The top ones are called EZC cards. And as you can see, they've got the black and the red background, so they really stand out visually. The next ones on the line are the large symbol cards. They've got the large letter or the large number in the corners, and then this, a little nicely large size on the other corners. They do have the faces of the cards in the center. The cards that I tend to prefer, and a lot of the people that I work with tend to prefer, are the Hoyle Super Jumbo, which are shown here. You've got a nice big number at the corners. You've got a good big size of the symbol. And the nice thing about these cards, they've taken the face away from them, so you don't have any visual clutter of the face of the king, queen, or jack. And many people have bought these and are really happy with the simplicity of the design. It's nice to know you can get large print playing cards without having to buy large cards. The other thing that can come in handy is a playing card holder. It's just an acrylic holder. So if you have arthritis or difficulty holding cards, or you're playing a game where you're holding quite a few cards and it's difficult for you, the playing card holder will put them up at a nice angle and easy to move the cards in and out. So those are just some of the samples we have of our playing cards and playing card holder in our store. This device is the talking thermometer and it's a clinical thermometer. With flu season coming, it's a good idea to have a thermometer handy. And most of the digital displays on thermometers are impossible for many of us to read. So a talking thermometer is a nice addition. The power button has a yellow strip across it and it is raised in a, in a horizontal fashion so you can feel that with your finger. And then there's a half moon in blue up towards the top that's also raised and that's the button to have it talk to you. To turn the device on, you just hold the power button briefly And she said, ready. And if you can see the display, or if you can't see the display, it's a terrible little display to try to read. I took a temperature earlier. If I hit the blue talking button. Your body temperature is below 89.2 degrees Fahrenheit. So it didn't remember what I took before. That's not a problem. If I hold the thermometer to simulate what it would be like taking a temperature, When it reads the temperature and is at a, a steady temperature, it will beep three times and give us the temperature. 
So right now it's reading the temperature and the beeps let us know that it is working. This thermometer will read Fahrenheit or Celsius and you can switch between the two if you want. The directions are fairly clear to understand and it does take a small button battery, the one of the little watch batteries that you unscrew on the back and remove and replace with a new battery when you need to. And it will turn off after a minute or so. Your body temperature is 95.1 degrees Fahrenheit. Your body temperature is 95.1 degrees Fahrenheit. So when it, when it reached a solid temperature, it did three beeps and then it read the temperature out loud twice. If I want to hear it again, I hit the top blue button. Your body temperature is 95.1 degrees Fahrenheit. The speaker's on the back, so if you did have trouble hearing it, you could hold it up closer to your ear as you push that button to hear it. And there is a display if somebody with good vision is looking at that for you. And then to turn it back off manually, hold down that little power button and it beeped once and now it's turned off. And that concludes um, our product demonstration and videos um, for the webinar. For those of you that have, have stuck with us here, um, like I had mentioned at the beginning, we are offering a 10% off coupon um, for those that attended the webinar today. Um, and to receive that coupon, you can either call us um, and, and we can give you that coupon um, or you can email us um, and we can send it to you um, via an email. Yeah, the telephone number here at the council um, is toll free 1-800-783-5213 and the email address for that is info at wcblind.org and for the remaining portion of the webinar here we're going to open it up um, for suggestions on products that um, you'd like to see us offer or, or if you have questions if, if there are certain products available or any other general um, questions um, that you would have in regards to uh, the webinar today. Um, so we'll open that up to the floor now. Uh, hello. I'm wondering if you've found um, a better replacement to 2020 pens. I've found the Raisin Bold pen, Raisin or Ryzen, I'm not sure. And um, my students seem to do a number on the nibs quite frequently, and they don't last very long. So the product that we have um, that replaced um, the Sanford 2020 pens, um, the one that we carry is called a 2020 Bold Rider pen. Um, I, I believe they obviously just stole kind of the 2020 name um, from Sanford. Um, so it, it's different than the Ryzen that you have. I haven't had much feedback um, from people saying that the, the tip is wearing down quickly on them. Uh, most people think that this replacement is is um, acceptable. Um, so if you wanted to try, they're a dollar fifty each here. If you wanted to try a couple of them, and um, we'd always appreciate your feedback if you wanted to have your students try some and see how they hold up over the long haul. Um, uh, that's an option. Um, we also had a question here um, on what products are in most demand um, by public libraries and I, I can't say we get uh, a lot of demand from the libraries themselves. Generally it's going to be magnification type products um, that they can carry and it's going to be you know each each library itself um, that would carry such a product so some of them may have a, a video magnifier um, at, at, at their library. Some of them may just have um, some basic handheld um, type magnifiers that they have um, for people to use, but it's going to be um, each individual library in, in, in themselves that, that would have those products. So 
um, if you wanted to see your local library um, carry some different products, um, I'd suggest um, talking with them and, and they can call us for, for ideas. Um, we also have another question here um, asking if we have any magnifiers. Um, and the answer to that is yes, we have a plethora of magnifiers here, um, uh, an assortment of different styles, um, some uh, handheld um, non-lighted magnifiers, um, some of them with lights, um, some that are more portable than others, um, some that stand right on the print, um, some that are small and could you could fit in your pocket or your purse. Um, and they range anywhere in magnification from two times up to about 20 times. Um, the, is for those of you that aren't aware, the, the stronger the magnifier, the smaller the lens gets on the magnifiers. Um, and so we, we always highly suggest if you're going to get a magnifier to, to try the different ones out to, to make sure you're getting the correct magnification um, for your vision. Uh, let's see, we have another question here, what magnifying software do you like best for, pe for people who have some vision? Um, uh, Tim has an older version of Zoom Text it looks like. Um, a Zoom Text is one of the ones um, that we generally suggest um, and I don't think uh, if you have an older version, I don't think any of the newer versions are probably going to do too much more. Um, the one, what your version is doing there. Um, they also offer a USB um, version of Zoom Text, so it's more portable to take with you. Um, but there's also another um, company that makes a USB version called iZoom. Um, that's a, it's a USB plug that will work on, on any computer that you're going to work on, and the cost of the iZoom is a little bit less um, than Zoom Text. Um, the Zoom text is. Uh, Gene, do you have? And and with the the iZoom, they have a 30-day um, demo that you can download and try that to see if it's going to work for you. Um, and if you haven't used Zoom text yet on a certain computer, they also have a trial version that you could download um, to use. Um, so it looks like the, uh, the Zoom text didn't work for you. I might suggest if you wanted to, to give me a call, um, Tim, and we can discuss a little more in detail of, of some of the issues maybe you were having with Zoom text or why it didn't work well for you, and, and we can give you a better suggestion maybe on what might work for you. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Um, so yeah, feel free to give us a call um, if you have further questions on that and I can talk to you more about it. Um, just kind of going through the questions here, see if I missed any. Okay, none that I can find. Um, any other questions um, for me? Okay, so I have a question. Um, is JAWS um, slash Magic, um, which is screen reading software, uh, too complicated uh, for a public setting where people are unfamiliar with it? Um, and I'd, I'd probably say yes to that, um, unless somebody is, is already familiar with how it works and, and have a lot of the basic functions down. They're just looking for some additional tutelage. But if you're, if you're learning it for the first time, it's definitely something that would be best learned in a, in a private setting. Any other questions? Usually we get our archived webinar together over the next couple days, so early next week, or certainly by the middle of next week, um, you will get an email. 
and it will give you a link to the archived webinar. The archived webinar does not occur within this Talking Communities webinar frame. It's just a link off of our um, web page, so it's much easier to access for people. It will be available, and the links to all the videos will be there. So if anybody wants to review any of the videos that they saw, um, that's a way to do that as well. So I'll just close here. And thank you all for attending our webinar today. And thanks to all the uh, my colleagues who contributed to the webinar and providing us with um, good information. We're starting to plan next year's webinar. So if anybody has any favorite uh, topics that they would like to hear about, feel free to send that um, in an email so that we can put it on the list of things to consider. More information about next year's will be coming out in January. So for those of you who are still here, if you wouldn't mind taking this short survey that just came up from SurveyMonkey, um, all of your responses come to us anonymously and as a group, so there's no individual I identification of what anybody filled out. Thanks very much for attending the webinar today, and hopefully we'll see you in the new year. Bye now.